So when we look at the iron, it's low enough that I'm going to suggest that we actually bring in iron because your ferritin is below 18. This is a huge red flag marker that's been shown to reflect anemias and needs to be corrected immediately regardless of any other sort of things going on and could be the source of fatigue. Um, big time, if we look at your hemoglobin, your RBC, your hematocrit, all of these are generally low and this can be a red flag marker that's been shown to reflect anemias. Now, it's not just iron anemia when it comes to the RBC, hemoglobin, hematocrit, but I think a good place to start is with iron because we do see the other markers, ferritin, the iron, the TIBC, the UIBC, and even the saturation being quite low. Hello, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today I'm going to be sharing an audio file that I prepared for a client describing her depletion patterns in her blood work. I have really enjoyed sharing these little snippets of audios that I prepare for my clients. I find, you know, I've been in the space like 15 plus years and I find when you're sitting across from somebody on a Zoom call or in person and as a practitioner, I'm just telling them all the things that I'm seeing and it's happening really, really quickly. They usually leave that appointment and end up messaging me two days later, like, Hey, my friend was asking like about my blood work. And I know you said something about ferritin, but like, I don't remember the rest. And so I started preparing audio messages for my clients that they could download and save and listen and play to their friends and just like really understand what's going on in their bodies. And I wish, I wish that I would have had a resource like this when I was feeling super down and out. And so I'm just so thrilled that not only I get to prepare these for clients, but that I get to share some of them with you. And so I share them every couple of months. The last one I shared was July 18th, episode 430. We talked about iron, ferritin, and inflammation. If you like these audios and you want to check out more, I've labeled them all blood work patterns and then the whatever the topic is that we're covering in the audio. So there's a couple sprinkled throughout the last two years if you want to delve deeper into this little series that we're doing. So in the last episode that we did in July, um, there was a a common question that came up for a lot of the listeners. So I thought I would just cover it in this audio before we got started with our main conversation, which is the depletion aspect of things. And the question from last session was, how do I know that it's time to add supplements? Do I need to add supplements? Is diet not enough to do all of these things? And we covered this a little bit with Chris Cresser in episode 432 that released on August 1st. So go and check that out too if you want to delve deeper into why just diet just isn't enough, though I would love for it. And I know that Chris would love if diet was enough. We need to also understand that one, it's not enough. And two, the clients that are coming to me 100% of the time have adjusted their diet left, right, sideways, upside down. Most of them are eating a very, very, very clean diet, whether that be keto or paleo, AIP, like something within that realm. And so when I'm sharing these audios and I'm talking about specific actions that we're going to do, this is like, beyond nutrition support. Okay. I do offer nutrition support and macro coaching for sure. And as a practitioner, I need to understand that everyone's kind of at a different level. Obviously, I think the challenge that I had in finding practitioners that would help me is that they saw every individual as being the same and they would just take them through the process that they created for all clients. And that just doesn't work. At least none of the people that are coming to me can all be on the same thing. It's just not possible. And so when I'm talking about supplements or actions or breast implants, like we're going to be covering a little bit today, it's because we've exhausted all other options. The diet is clean. The diet maybe needs to be adjusted. Maybe in the case of today's conversation, we need to be eating more. But as a professional in this space, seeing as much as I do, sometimes I know that if we just focus on diet and spin our wheels on that for the next year, things are not going to get progressively better. And usually individuals come to me because they've exhausted all options. And I like to look at things from many different angles. And so I think you're going to see that highlighted really well in today's episode. So if you've been dealing with just ongoing issues, you don't entirely know what's going on 
maybe you're working out, maybe you're working out a lot, maybe you're working out six or seven days a week and you're still not seeing progress. Today's episode was prepared just for you. (laughs) So if you want to learn more about how to understand your blood work and like look at your labs and understand what it's saying. I do have a blood work course. It's on sale right now. It's a hundred dollars off. If you go to healthfulpursuit.com slash blood work, you can check that out. And if you listen to today's episode and you're like, Oh my goodness, I want to work with Leanne. I have a bunch of ways on how you can do that. You can go to healthfulpursuit.com slash coaching to learn more. And if you know where the show notes are in this app that you're listening to me on, you can also scroll down below and the link to my page is there and you can look around and find the coaching quite easily from that page. So, okay, let's get to today's episode, which is an audio recording that I prepared for a client talking about her blood work. Hey, my name is Leanne Vogel. I'm fascinated with helping women navigate how to eat, move, and care for their bodies using a low-carb diet. I'm a small-town holistic nutritionist turned three-time international best-selling author turned functional medicine practitioner, offering telemedicine services around the globe to women looking to better their health and stop second-guessing themselves. I'm here to teach you how to wade through the wellness noise to get to the good stuff that'll help you achieve your goals. We're supporting your low carb life beyond the, if it fits your macros conversation, hormones, emotions, relationship to your body, workouts, letdowns, motivation, blood work, detoxing, metabolism. I'm providing the tools to put your motivation into action. Think of it like quality time with your bestie mixed with a little med school. So you're empowered at your next doctor visit. Get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn about your body and how to care for it better. This is the Keto Diet Podcast. I'm so glad that we were able to get going with this. We're going to be talking about the red flag markers in your blood work. We're going to be talking about the hair tissue mineral analysis. We're going to be talking about future decisions that we're going to need to make. I want to start off by just highlighting an overall summary of what we're seeing in the blood work, your experience in the hair tissue mineral analysis to really put together a summary. So if you're like, what is this lady talking on and on about? All of this went way over my head. You're not eating enough you're massively depleted. And we've done great strides over the last couple of weeks here to move forward with that. I'm so proud of you and the accomplishes, accomplishments rather that you've made here. We have a lot to go, but I'm really, really excited that you took it to heart. You incorporated the rest days. You incorporated more eating. I'm really proud of you because I know that can be hard because it's kind of like a trust fall and you're expecting that I'm going to catch you. And so I'm right here with my arms out. I'm ready to go. But there's a good, there is a good amount of depletion across both the hair tissue mineral analysis and the blood work. And this comes to our first decision we need to make really is we need to ask ourselves, why is this depletion happening? Now, this depletion could be strictly because you've been pushing for so long. You're in a fight or flight situation and your body's nervous system specifically is just stuck in this and your body is not digesting the food that you're eating. The limited amount of food that you were eating before we started working together just caused a massive depletion. That could totally be it. And if that's the case, over the next 60 days in this new protocol that we're going to create, at the end of that, when we do your blood work again, if you're cool with that, um, obviously not such a big panel that we did this last time. I have just a couple markers that I want to check on. If we see a progression in that area, then we're like, sweet, okay, awesome. This was a depletion. It's just going to take some time to get out of it. In the back of my mind, though, just hearing you talk about some of the GI stuff, if it were me... I would do a stool test at some point to just see if there's something going on in the gut that needs to be addressed head on. Now, there are many reasons for depletions, and we talked about this a little bit a couple of minutes ago in that it could just be a matter of you weren't eating enough, you were go, 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 going for a really long time, and you just need to eat a bunch, take a rest, and digest your food, okay? That could totally be it. And if that's the case, we're gonna see your blood work shift. You're gonna start feeling better. If after 60 days, you're not feeling better and things are not shifting, or if they start shifting and then we kind of backtrack, it would be helpful to look at the gut 
If it were me and this were my blood work, 1 billion percent, I would be ordering a stool test for myself like to do pretty soon. But you get to decide. It's really up to you. If you want to wait and kind of see how things go, we can do that. If you want to test immediately, we can do that. If you just want to say, I'm just not sure, can we decide later? We can do that too. Um, but I just wanted to have you think about that as you listen to these audios. We would do that stool testing probably next month to give you some time to just be on your protocols and such. Okay, so that's kind of the first piece. The second piece is let's just go into the blood work and talk about all the nitty gritty of what's going on, what I'm seeing. You can follow along and then we'll finish with the hair tissue mineral analysis. So with the blood work, uh, I'm going to kind of be bouncing all over the place because I reorganize the blood work so it makes far more sense because when it comes from the lab, it's all over the place. You heard me talk about how important it is for my brain to be functioning well. Over all of the symptoms that people come to me with, the big one, like the one that really gets to people, is the forgetfulness and just a brain that is not working properly. Like losing your keys, forgetting something at work, forgetting plans. It just, it sucks and it feels not so great. If you've gone through this, you know it does not feel good when your brain is not working well. Our sponsor, Neurohacker, has combined 28 of the most research-backed nootropic ingredients on Earth into the ultimate brain fuel formula, Quala Mind, and it's been changing people's lives for years now. For help with my daily mental performance and help supporting my long-term brain health, I think Qualia Mind is indispensable. It's so cool to take a product where you don't have to wonder if it's working because I notice the difference in just days. My focus, my mood, my memory, my willpower to get things done is laser focused. The formula is non-GMO, vegan, gluten-free, and the ingredients are meant to complement one another, factoring in each ingredient's effect on supporting mental clarity. It's also backed by a 100-day money-back guarantee, so you have almost three months to try Qualia Mind at no financial risk and decide for yourself. As somebody who loves the ketogenic diet and loves the benefits that the ketogenic diet gives us to our brains, going that uptick and really using Qualia Mind to help with our ability to focus, get things done, the motivation, the not losing the keys, et cetera, et cetera, while we're on our ketogenic diet, or perhaps you're one of those people where you've been eating keto and you just haven't had those same brain boosting effects that a lot of people talk about, Qualia Mind. See what the best brain fuel formula on earth can do for your mindset. Go to Neurohacker dot com slash KDP for $100 off. As a listener of the Keto Diet Podcast, use the code KDP at checkout for an extra 15% off your first purchase. That's neurohacker.com slash KDP to try Qualia Mind with code KDP to experience life-changing mental performance. So the first place I want to look is iron saturation, TIBC, UIBC, iron, and ferritin. So we're seeing the TIBC be really high, the UIBC be really high. This is generally a very strong sign of iron being needed. I actually traced back your previous blood work from 2022, and your hemoglobin was pretty low. It was sitting at 12 something. That's not enough to be flagged from a doctor. As far as I could see, they didn't run any iron panels. So you've probably been dealing with this anemia for quite some time. Now, why do we get iron anemia? One is we're just not eating enough iron. Another could be that we're dealing with heavy metal toxicities, which we do see a significant amount in your hair tissue mineral analysis. This can displace nutrients, including selenium, iron, your B vitamins, which can cause an issue. So a big piece with root cause is that we get rid of that Dove soap because that has mercury in it and we got to get that out. Okay. So when we look at the iron, it's low enough that I'm going to suggest that we actually bring in iron because your ferritin is below 18. This is a huge red flag marker that's been shown to reflect anemias and needs to be corrected immediately, regardless of any other sort of things going on and could be the source of fatigue. Um, big time. If we look at your hemoglobin, your RBC, your hematocrit, all of these are generally low. And this can be a red flag marker that's been shown to reflect anemia 
anemias. Now, it's not just iron anemia when it comes to the RBC hemoglobin hematocrit, but I think a good place to start is with iron because we do see the other markers, ferritin, the iron, the TIBC, the UIBC, and even the saturation being quite low. This is a general pretty strong pattern for iron anemias. And then if we look to your MCV, MCH, MCHC, so generally when we see um, these markers kind of pulling apart where the MCV and MCH is going high, and then we see the MCHC being low, again, this can be a mixture of low hydrochloric acid, meaning low stomach acid, a need for B9, a need for B12, a need for iron. And so all these nutrients can um, affect the red blood cells quite significantly and cause a lot of issues with like energy production. It can even get so bad as you get headaches, you're unable to concentrate, you have anxiety. And so I think we definitely need to bring in some iron directly and then figure out, right? So I was talking about that before in the last audio. We need to bring in iron. We need to bring in nutrients, but we need to ask ourselves why are these nutrients so low? Is it a diet issue? Well, I think there could definitely be a case for, in the past, not eating enough, for sure. Is it the destruction of red blood cells when it comes to like toxicity, antibiotics, infections, autoimmune conditions can cause this? This gets me to the conversation around your breast implants. They are rather old, and I would really, 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 really encourage you to think about what you wanna do with those. At 19 years old, it's probably likely that you have a higher risk of the implant bursting and the capsule itself causing immune issues. So if you want to discover this or like go through this further, we'll probably need to book a mini session to go through this in more detail. If you decide like, Leanne, I want to get the implants out. I'm not going to replace them. I think your body's a little bit too weak to do this right now, but just start thinking about it. It can be something that you marinate on. It's definitely in the back of my mind and how to prepare your body more sufficiently. But right now you are absolutely depleted and we really, really, really need to focus on rest nutrients, not pushing hard. I myself personally have had to go through this. It's really freeing once you get a handle on it and you can actually achieve a whole bunch if you actually take it seriously. So that's exciting. Then we look to your white blood cells. So this is another area where we're seeing depletion with the white blood cells themselves being at four. When the doctor sees your free T3, let's go there really quickly before I forget. Your free T3 sitting at 1.6. What the doctor is probably going to suggest, perhaps, is that you go on some form of thyroid support. But the issue with that is your reverse T3 is also elevated. So when reverse T3 is elevated, it's very, very likely that if you bring in direct thyroid support, your body will just convert it into the deactivated thyroid hormone, which is reverse T3. It looks like this pattern in the thyroid is more of a selenium need and a liver imbalance more than anything. This also brings me to thinking about testing the gut because thyroid hormone conversion happens both in the liver and the gut. If there's something happening in the gut that's causing all these nutrient issues, it'd be better to know now versus much later in the process. So I met this team of people many years ago. It was probably 2003. 14, 15 or so at a conference. And they said, we are making these paleo sticks. They are different than any other meat stick on the market because they are fermented and each stick contains 1 billion CFUs of probiotics. At the time I was living in Canada and I could not get these sticks. I remember Kevin and I loading up our RV and driving to Montana to drive to the owner's parents' house to pick up these sticks. Now fast forward a whole bunch of years and these are now the Paleo Valley grass-fed beef sticks. They are my favorite snack. They have been for almost 10 years. I always, always have one in my purse, sometimes two. They are my go-to snack. They're helpful for the gut. They strengthen your immune system They're gluten-free, soy-free, dairy-free, GMO-free, freaky chemical, additive dye, preservative-free. Many of the flavors are 100% free of carbohydrates. And the best part, they are absolutely delicious. I am so happy that I took a chance, loaded up my RV, and (laughs) grabbed those sticks. It was like a really long trip. I think it was something like 12 hours of driving to get these things. And I'll never forget the first time. I had a whole bag to myself. 
the flavor is unchanged, the product quality unchanged over all these years. I love my Paleo Valley grass-fed meat sticks. You can head on over to paleovalley.com slash keto and get 15% off your order of their meat sticks. Again, that's paleovalley.com slash keto. Okay. The next red flag marker is going to be your glucose. You do not have a diet that should have a glucose of 112 when fasting. Oftentimes when we're looking at this, we're thinking inflammation. Inflammation can cause a significant amount of um, increase in glucose, as can just cortisol. When, when our adrenals are imbalanced, it's going to cause an uptick in our glucose and make it more challenging to maintain a regulated glucose. You should be able to maintain an 80, 85, no problem. So the fact that it's 112 with what you've been eating makes absolutely no sense. Also, liver issues can play a role in this. And so I'm going to bring in just a touch of liver support. I don't want to burden you too much just because you are depleted. And if we go too hard at things, you'll feel terrible. So let's not do that. Um, when we're looking at the uric acid, this can be low due to anemias. And so I want to just keep an eye on this little uric acid marker to see how it responds once we bring in some iron and other nutrients. Your new protocol is going to be absolutely jam-packed with the nutrients. Okay. So my goal here, aside from the whole GI map stool testing piece that you can decide on is to do a, a protocol for 60 days at the end of those 60 days or nearing the end of the 60 days, we're going to run your blood work again and kind of see, okay, what impact did it make? And where do we need to shift from here? Other red flags, bilirubin being a little bit low. Uh, generally, this is a red flag marker that's been shown to reflect liver support being needed, can be at the root of some infections, inflammation. So we're going to bring in just a little bit of liver support. Um, the ALT is also just slightly functionally elevated also. Um, so again, liver support. The GGT is sitting at four. Uh, looking at your overall mercury level in your hair tissue mineral analysis, I'm going to go with metals being a huge issue here so that you understand kind of you're like, how could I possibly have this much mercury? Like what the heck? When our nutrients are depleted, it allows metals that would generally be detoxed like quite easily, even not even enter the body through the skin, be absorbed much quicker because our minerals are so imbalanced. So how we get the metals out of the body most effectively is by regulating our minerals. Selenium is a big part of this. Your sodium potassium is a big part of this. Magnesium is a big part of this. And your B9 and your B12, which are not minerals, but vitamins also play a role in mercury detoxification. So it's likely that once we build up your body and your vitality a little bit stronger, we're going to have to do a bunch of metals work, but I'm really, really happy to see kind of some really significant answers here. And I think we can make some good progression with the nutrients over the next 60 days. LDL is slightly elevated. So this could be because you literally have no thyroid hormones to clear LDL. So I'm going to go with that for now. The real goal with the thyroid is to um, bring in some selenium and overall liver support. And if you decide to do the stool testing to just kind of see like what's going on with the gut and why aren't the thyroid hormones converting properly, because you have enough of the precursors of the thyroid hormones. They're just not converting over into the active thyroid hormone and your body's saying, I don't want to any thyroid hormones. So this can be at the root of not eating enough, too much inflammation, excess cortisol and stress. We are seeing a significant stress pattern throughout the blood work. And so it could just be that because of your push, 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 pushing and your go, go, going, that the metabolism is forcibly stopping the, the progression by downregulating your metabolism to protect yourself. Okay. Um, and we can see that also in the, um, FSH and LH. Okay. So your FSH and LH are like so low. Usually when these are this low, we're thinking, not eating enough, adrenal issues, stress. And so again, when it comes to hormones, it's not a matter of just throwing on birth control and, and just seeing what happens. Um, the FSH and LH play a critical role in overall balance, not only of just overall cycles, but even with our progesterone and overall egg health and everything. So we got to get you eating more. We got to get the stress factor down. And how we're going to do that is a lot of uh, nervous system pieces. 
Okay, let's talk about the hair tissue mineral analysis. Before we get there though, I wanna talk a little bit about the birth control piece because you mentioned you were gonna go into your PCP. If they agree to get you off birth control as a form of supporting your estrogen, we can give you a little bit of time off of that before we test your hormones again and kind of see what supports you need. The birth control pill will affect hormones overall, so it's good to kind of give you some time to just kind of see how the body responds before we start giving yourself supports. I think a big, 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 big part of this is that you weren't eating enough. You're in a massive depletion and your hormones are kind of like so incredibly sensitive that when, when the littlest thing happens, they can be affected. And so I'd be really curious to see how your hormones respond after, I don't know, a year of full eating, less working out, little walks, that sort of thing, uh, taking it easy, um, your hormones could respond quite nicely. I hope you enjoyed that today. Again, if you want to learn how to understand your labs yourself, you can go to healthfulpursuit.com slash blood work. I put together an entire program that shows you not only how to understand your blood work, but all of the functional ranges. You are not going to find this anywhere. I have compiled this over years of learning functional blood chemistry, and the course is $100 off right now for a limited time. I'll have it run for a couple more days. So again, that's healthfulpursuit.com slash blood work. Okay. I will see you back here next Tuesday for another episode. See ya. Thanks for listening. Join us next Tuesday for another episode of the Keto Diet Podcast. Looking for more resources? Go to healthfulpursuit.com for keto meal plans, weight loss programs, low carb recipes, and oodles of free resources to get you going. The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, recipes, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representation or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program. 